Can you hear that? I think that's a coyote. That's kind of funny because they don't actually howl at the moon. Definitely coyotes. Well, it's uh, April 14th slash 15th on 2014. And uh, it's the lunar eclipse. The first of, of four that we're going to be getting every six months here in the United States. And it's um, a little past midnight here. It started a few minutes ago. It's a very slow event because it happens as the moon orbits the Earth and enters the Earth's shadow that's projected onto the sky. The Earth's shadow is basically a cone extending behind it in space, you know, on the other side of the sun. And uh, as the moon orbits the Earth, it, it moves into it. So it looks like the moon's getting eaten away by the, by the Earth's shadow. In this video, which I'm just using my camera for with my telephoto lens, the moon is moving right to left. So over the course of the next hour or so, it's going to move farther and farther into that shadow, which you're already starting to see as a circle, big circle in the sky, a few times the diameter of the, uh, the moon's size on the sky. Okay, we're about a third of the way into the eclipse by now. And I've set the camera to take um, a more sensitive image. So you can see the moon there, and you can see that uh, the Earth's shadow is really blocking a lot of it. You can also see the reflection of the moon. It's so bright, and I'm taking such a sensitive picture. You can see it uh, reflected inside the camera. And to the right of it, you can see that twinkling star, that spica. It's really obvious by eye. It's pretty neat to see it here in the picture, too. And here I've zoomed out just a little bit. And you can see the moon there, and the star now to the upper right is actually not a star at all. It's Mars. It's a very red by eye. And uh, in about, I don't know, half an hour or so when the moon's fully eclipsed, it may turn red as well. And it may look uh, about the same color as Mars. That'd be pretty interesting. And I apologize for whispering, but I'm right outside the bedroom window and I don't want to wake my wife up. And we're getting close now. I'm actually seeing lots of stars in the sky, which is hard when the moon is full. You normally can't see very many. Um, I've set the, uh, the ISO to 6400, which is as much as I can do during video. And you can see features now on the quote-unquote dark side of the moon in the, in the Earth's shadow. It's not really the dark side of the moon. The dark side of the moon is the other side of the moon that we can't see right now. But what you're seeing is the part of the moon blocked by the Earth's shadow. And there are features definitely in there. They're being lit by the sunlight that's traveling through Earth's atmosphere. So it's, uh, it's redder light, just like at sunrise and sunset. If you were standing on the moon at that spot, say on the left-hand side there, you would see the Earth covering most, but not quite all, of the sun. And it's pretty neat. You can see Spica now on the right pretty clearly. And that uh, crescent on the left is a... Uh, is an internal reflection in the camera. You can see it's the same phase as the moon. It's getting thinner than it was earlier. This is pretty cool. Stay on target. Stay on target. And here it is, totality. We're actually deep into it now. And uh, in the video, I can see on the monitor that the right-hand side of the moon still looks like it's lit. But in fact, the entire moon is now into the dark part of the Earth's shadow. But the Earth's shadow gets darker the deeper the moon goes into it. And right now, it's going in right to left. So the left-hand side of the moon is in a darker part of the shadow than the right-hand side. The camera is trying to adjust for that, and it makes the left-hand side too dark and the right-hand side a little too bright. 
But honestly, uh, by eye, uh, the moon is incredible. It is so orange. Very beautiful. And you can see Spica there shining brightly. This is really quite lovely. The, uh, the upper left-hand side of the moon also has got a lot of maria, these dark plains filled with dark lava, basically. And uh, that makes it even darker. And because it's in the deeper part of the shadow, it's, it's really quite, uh, quite ghostly, even by eye. And it's interesting, is it, uh, by eye? Let me zoom out here. The moon and Mars are about the same color. Let me move up a little bit, and there's Mars in the upper right. So you can see the moon in the bottom center and spike up below it to the right, and then Mars to the upper right. And it's really neat there. They really are about the same color right now. Now Mars is orange-red because of rust, literally iron oxide on its surface. The moon looks red right now because that light that it's seeing is being filtered through the Earth's atmosphere. The light is leaving the sun, passing through the Earth's atmosphere, and then lighting up the moon. And it, the blue light gets scattered away, the red light goes straight through, and that's, uh, that's why sunrises and sunsets look so red. So in fact, if you were standing on the moon right now, imagine you'd look up in the sky, the Earth would be completely dark, and around it would be a ring of bright light, glowing red, all the way around. What you're seeing is every sunset and every sunrise happening at the same time on Earth. That's, uh, that's pretty dang cool. But that's why the moon looks red, and, uh, or orange right now, and, uh, it's kind of neat because it's a very dull orange. It's a beautiful color, but it's it's not uh, it's not shiny, and Mars looks very shiny, so it's kind of tricky to the eye to compare them. But they do look the same color to me. And I got to tell you, looking at this, it's amazing. I I hope you got a chance to see it as well. And if you didn't, we have another one in October of this year, and then another one in the spring of 2015 and then another one in the fall of 2015, four in a row, to be seen from the United States, four total lunar eclipses, which is pretty unusual. Uh, it's not hugely rare, it happens, but it's still pretty pretty unusual and pretty cool. And it's, uh, it's a nice reminder that uh, there's a lot of amazing stuff going on over our heads. You just have to look up and see it. So, I hope you have clear skies and a chance to see them. And if you don't, you know, it's still amazing just to know that this stuff is real and that it exists. And, and you know, this it, it fills my heart with joy to be able to see this for myself, of course, but also to share it. So thank you very much for watching this, sharing this, uh, this special time. So for badastronomy.com, this is Phil Plate.